Hi, my name is James Holmes, and I am an artist here in the Art District on Santa Fe. And today we're at the uh, Artist on Santa Fe Gallery on the second story in the studio spaces where I keep my working studio. And I want to take you on a little tour, talk a little bit about my work, and uh, let you know how you can connect with me at the end of the video. So this is my gallery space, and what I have here are uh, five paintings that are a fairly good representation of the type of work I do. This first painting is representative of the palette knife work that I do. I work in acrylic. I work in an abstract expressionistic style. And these paintings tend to end up at the end of them having a very textural or textile style of, um, of paint application. Um, they're done in layers and I always paint in vibrant color. I tend to really be drawn towards the reds and the golds and the blues. Um, so you'll see a lot of that repeating in a lot of my work. Not exclusively, but it is something you'll see a lot. The second painting is very similar uh, to the first, certainly in style. It's also a palette knife painting, very much the same technique, even more bold or brilliant in terms of the color palette, but you can see it's a much looser style of application than the first painting. Um, this one is done to really create a lot of presence from behind in the, in the base layer. Uh, with accenting layers over the top. Just have a little bit of a different way of finishing the work. Then we move into a transition to the work I do with paintbrush. I love to work on large surfaces. I think this painting is 48 by 62 inches. Um, I love to face a big canvas. Um, I use a brush or a series of brushes and again uh, vibrant colors. Uh, this would be a painting that would be very physical and the way that it's made, where you can see there's a lot of really large strokes, both downward strokes, upward strokes, uh, straight facing strokes, and then some areas where the paint is a little bit more intentionally or in, uh, in, in, intentionally, a little more um, intensely applied to the canvas. And um, you can see that in some of these areas across the, the plane of the painting. Um, you can also see that there's a lot of blending of colors actually on the canvas. So I'm actually taking colors and creating colors while blending the acrylic paint while still wet on the canvas. And all this again is done in layers. We transition now to this painting, which is very similar style to the one we just looked at, but there's some very important differences that go to technique. This is more of a painting that starts out like a color field, where you've got an intense application of blue, done with a brush over the entire, um, in this case, almost quarter surface of the canvas, red, gray, uh, kind of a golden um, yellow, orange, and purple. And then a series of blending that then occurs with the brush or across the entire surface of the canvas, again, done in layers. And then the final layer of this painting, I remember it very well, were the white layers you see here uh, which finished the painting. This is a painting that I really love, and I'm surprised I still have it, because actually this is a painting that when I've exhibited it, I've come close to selling it, I think, three times. It's a very popular expression, and it's one that I'm very, very happy with and proud of. And then finally, we come to another painting that's done on a large canvas using acrylic paint. Um, again, this is all done with a brush. Like the former painting, very much like a color field in its base layers, and then coming in with a lot of long and short and direct strokes on the canvas, building up layers of color. Uh, like an example, this pink color here is a blending of the white and red, of course, but there's probably six or seven colors across the plane of this canvas that are derivatives of the base layers that were put down. So I love to do blending on the canvas uh, as part of my technique. Um, we're gonna head back to the studio now, Studio J. Just a coincidence, J for James. And then my story here, and if you go to my website at jamesholmesstudio.com, you can read about my uh, path as an artist. Come on in. Okay, here we are in my creative space, my home away from home. I love the energy in this space. Um, as I mentioned, uh, we're on the second floor. This is not part of the retail gallery of the Artist on Santa Fe. So who's usually up here other than on first and third Friday? 
are my fellow artists. Um, and we have the opportunity to um, both have solitude to create work, but also that interaction among, uh, amongst cohorts, which is nice. And it really helps to create a great energy here. And so I love creating in this space. Um, the way I have my studio set up is uh, the center of the studio space. There's a skylight above, and so I love the light, the natural light that comes through, um, in addition to the enhancements I've made with light. I, at times, will work on just one canvas, and I'm working on one canvas. This is my primary working space. If I'm working on two canvases, I love the idea of a center table, which allows me to have you know, maybe a color palette and a set of brushes or palette knives on one side, and a color palette and a set of brushes and a palette knife on the other side. And I can work between two pieces, which I don't do a lot, but I have been known to do that from time to time. Um, so these are representations, again, of a similar type of idea. This is a painting that would have been done in, uh, in one session, all done with, a, with brushes. These are the brushes I tend to use most often. Um, you know, so even on these larger canvases, I'm using relatively uh, narrow brushes. And um, we'll use five or six brushes on an expression like this. Um, palette knife, even on a larger painting like this uh, palette knife painting, I'll use a smaller palette knife even on a larger canvas. Um, and you can tell which of these is my favorite. It gets the most action, which is this one right here. An example of representation of some of my work. This is a series of paintings that I just completed in a total of six. Um, these are um, acrylic on canvas uh, using uh, basically two primary colors and everything else being done is through blending on the canvas. So um, the way I, I set these up is they're done individually, but a collector can buy these as a duo or they can do it as like a triptych. And I'll show you what I mean by that, is that because it's the same color palette, um, these paintings can work well together in any number of combinations, including where you have um, different dominance of one color to the next, whereas some of these pieces have more gold in them, some have more pink in them, but they all work together. And um, so when, when I have these ready to be exhibited, um, a collector will have an opportunity to decide on one piece or two or three or four or whatever they want to do, and they'll all work really well together. So I'm really happy with this particular um, series. Another series that I've completed are these textile style paintings, and um, the technique here is really aggressive. Uh, I really kind of abuse the canvas uh, with brushes, but it's, in, it's important or necessary, particularly in this example, in order to give the painting a lot of texture where it looks like it's a piece of, uh, of, of cloth. And that's all done with the way that the paint is driven into the canvas fibers. And um, it's a technique that I really enjoy uh, working with. And I'm gonna work on scaling this at some point in the near future. Um, I love an orderly studio. And so even though with the COVID-19 response, I've not been working in this studio the last uh, six weeks roughly, um, it looks, about like this all the time. Uh, there are times when I'm working on a bigger canvas, from time to time I do mixed media or collage work, and there will be you know, scraps and stuff all over, all over the floor. But by and large, I do like to have an orderly space. And so you can see these racks serve both as drying racks for paintings that are wet, as well as storage for paintings that are either not on exhibit yet, or that um, maybe a collector is committed to them and they're just being held until uh, the transaction is completed. I do use some mixed media. Uh, this particular painting is an acrylic on canvas, but it also has latex paint, which gives it an unusual um, texture, which I really love. I love uh, texture in work. Um, I like to say that I paint from the inside out. Um, my work tends to be uh, based on either an experience that I've had, uh, maybe a person that's uh, in my life, some experience I've had with someone, a conversation I may have had. Um, it could be from something I've read. Um, I tend to internalize these things. And then when I come to the studio, I really never know what it is I'm going to be working on because I don't predetermine uh, what I'm going to have when I come here. I, I usually get to the studio. I spend a little bit of time fiddling around just to get my headspace into the more of a creative mode. Uh, a lot of times I'm coming from my full-time work that I do at Cherokee Ranch and Castle. 
And so I want to kind of clear my head of whatever has gone on during the course of the day and just show up and spend some time to get settled in to my art practice. Then I'll uh, decide what music. I always paint to music. And so I'll decide what music to play. It can be anything. Uh, some days, like today, I've got Tibetan singing bowls playing. Um, other times it could be classical music. And it could be something on the other end of the spectrum, like Pearl Jam. I love painting, uh, for whatever reason, Pearl Jam is, seems to be a, a, a band that, I, that really works well with my style of expressionist painting. And so um, music plays a very important role in my creative process. So then I'll um, let that, my, whatever's on my mind, whatever my um, intentions are around my uh, internal feelings, and the music I've selected oftentimes derive what the color palette ends up looking like. I'll mix my color palette or lay my color palette down, and then I face my canvas. And usually I'll complete a painting in one session of up to four hours. And other times I will come back uh, two or three times, depending upon what the work is like and how large the canvas is, to complete a work. And, uh, but that's usually my process. I paint in acrylic, so the drying time is really fast. And so I work fast as a result of that. Um, this is another, another collection of different uh, paintings that I have. Some of these have been on ex exhibition. Uh, some just recently came back here from Deep Space Gallery down at Parker. And some are waiting to be exhibited or presented the next time that we have an open call at the Veterans Arts Council, uh, which I also show at here in the, um, in the district. A couple of things I'll show you real quick, just about the um, studio space. I do like to draw a lot with oil pastels. So this is my drawing table. I have a couple of paintings sitting on it right now, but typically if you come into my studio, there will oftentimes be a pastel drawing that's in progress. Um, it takes me um, a little more time, typically, with the drawings than some of the paintings, which is kind of interesting. You'd think it would be the other way around. Um, but um, that's part of my process. So this is my drawing table. And then uh, I have a tea cart. Um, I like to, uh, to make my tea when I come in. Uh, heat up my water. Uh, love my favorite Tazo tea. I love green tea. And um, my sister sells essential oils, so I oftentimes have my diffuser going. And um, to create the atmosphere, the creative atmosphere that I want to have. And then finally, this is just an area for storage. I've got a lot of my paints are, are in these um, drawers in this chest. Uh, paper for drawings are in this. And then these pieces are smaller original paintings that are done in acrylic on canvas board that I really create for first and third Friday in the district. I find a lot of times people come down for the, uh, these events they're not really always interested in, in, in hauling out a 36 by 36 uh, inch canvas. And so um, I started making these smaller pieces so that anybody that comes and engages with me in a conversation about art, if they choose to collect a piece of my work, this is always a great idea for a work cubicle, a small space at home, uh, for someone that just wants to have a piece that's not real expensive, but they want an original piece of art. Um, so I do both my uh, brush technique just like we do on a big canvas, the same uh, technique and style, as well as the uh, palette knife in the smaller pieces as well. And so these I always have available um, whenever I'm exhibiting on first and third Friday. The final piece of the puzzle I'm gonna share with you in terms of the types of paintings that I make, I love painting acrylic over vintage photographs. So I love the idea that this one happens to be a gentleman that's on a paint horse um, this is a gentleman that's standing outside of a cabin in front of a 1940s uh, era Chevrolet. And this is a really neat uh, photograph from the 1920s. Uh, two young ladies sitting on the front bumper of a, uh, of a Model T Ford. And what's really fun about these pieces is, one is I'm taking these old photographs and giving them a new life by adding uh, the acrylic paint over the top of them. But I really enjoy uh, standing with uh, people that come in as, as people or guests of the art walks and asking them to, t to make up a story about what they think these two ladies are, are doing here or who this gentleman is and why he's standing here in front of this cabin uh, or why this gentleman is on this horse. And um, it's, it's just a lot of fun to kind of hear um, and inspire people's creative thought process by uh, asking those questions. And people uh, tend to enjoy that and tend to enjoy uh, collecting those paintings as well. So that's my uh, work. This is my workspace. 
I shared a little bit about my technique, and I really want to thank you for taking the time to visit. Uh, you can find me on the internet at jamesholmestudio.com, on Facebook at James Home Studio, on Instagram at James Home Studio, and I uh, would love to have you uh, connect with me, uh, like and share my work, and uh, reach out to me. A final piece would be an invitation to you. I do have open studio hours, typically on Saturdays and sometimes on Sundays. If you follow my website or my social media, I'll always post when I have open studio times. You can come down to the studio, look at my work, visit, talk about art, and um, I'll even buy you a cup of tea if you come down. So thanks a lot for being with me, and I hope you have a blessed rest of your day.